Scripture clearly states the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So what is this love of money? Is it just because I like money and, and I like to have good things and I know that I need money to have those good things? Is that what is the love of money? No, we can't oversimplify the love of money to just be that. The love of money is one word, avarice. Avarice is an extreme greed for material possession and getting and getting of riches, which is an insatiable desire to get more riches. No matter how much you have, you still want to get more and more. You can say that the root of all evil is avarice, it is greed, it is covetousness. You want to exploit people to get some. You want to do everything at all costs to get money, to get rich. And that is why scripture says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 that some people have craved money to their own heart, to their own soul, and they have pierced themselves with many sorrows. Now, this love of money will lead to the erosion of your faith, dissatisfaction in life, and exploitation of others. And you can see that it all springs from this. All the corruption that we see in the world today, in our countries, it is because of the love of money. It's because of greed. It is because of avarice. Now, the first point in this regard is that the love of money is a heart conditioning. The love of money is not because someone is rich and you would be like love of money is only attributed to the rich people. Even poor people suffer from this heart conditioning too. And to talk about this heart conditioning, let's talk about the scripture that makes a lot of Christians think that money is the root of all evil. And that is from this passage that Jesus told the disciples that it is hard for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God. And when we hear this, a lot of poor people could be like, yay! We are saved because we're going to have heaven. Because we are poor, we're going to make heaven. Pause and wait a minute. That's not what Jesus said. Neither should that be a solace for you to keep on being poor so that you can make heaven because that is a limitation of the mind. Let's read that scripture so that we can get the truth from it. Jesus looked at the faces of his disciples and said, How hard it is for the wealthy to enter into God's kingdom realm? The disciples were startled when they heard this. Pause for a moment. Why were they startled? If the disciples were poor, I believe they would have been like, wow, congratulations to us. Thank God that we are poor. They were startled because they were rich. They were surprised. Wow, Lord, seriously? We too, we want to be rich. And on the other angle, I would feel like the Lord was speaking this to help Judas Iscariot also, whom greed had taken over his heart. But maybe he never listened to the Lord's word. And I hope if you are in this place today, that you will listen to this and allow this hard conditioning of greed and avarice in you to dissolve through the word of God. But Jesus again said to them, Children, it is next to impossible for those who trust in their riches to find their way into God's kingdom. Now, pause again. It is trusting in riches that makes you come to that hard conditioning. That is what Jesus was actually saying. The rich people, those who trust in their riches, I have money, so I'm good, I don't need God, I don't need anything, I don't need anybody. That is the hard conditioning. And even poor people can have this hard conditioning of trusting in money because they feel like, they don't have it yet, but they feel like once I have money, I'll be fine. Once I have money, my whole life will be perfect. Once I have money, everything about my life will be shaped. And that is still the same hard conditioning. It is easier to stop a rope through the eye of a needle than for a wealthy person to enter God's kingdom. Now, all it's saying is that the love of money is a hard conditioning of trusting in money. The money is sitting there on my bank account. So who do you think you are to talk to me anyhow? I can arrest anybody that comes to me. I can bring securities to protect me. And that is a hard conditioning of the love of money because think about this that money can never satisfy this person because as much as they have the money keeps going down because it is meant to be used you keep using it and the more you use it you want to get more so that you can refill it up scripture says they trust in their wealth and boast of great riches yet they cannot redeem themselves from death by paying a ransom to god redemption does not come so easily for no one can ever pay enough to live forever and never see a grave. Number two, there's no satisfaction in money. No amount of money that you can gather will satisfy you. It cannot satisfy your soul. It cannot satisfy your life. 
because the more you have the more there is need the more money you gather the more need there is the more problems there is it is meaningless at the end of the day that's why christ said why do you gather up and store up treasures on a way moth and rust? where you use it to buy food thieves can enter and steal you are at risk why do you focus on this he wasn't saying do not have money money is necessary to have but when you start trusting in money it becomes another thing and the love of money is a self-destruct weapon on its own because it will lead you into so many things that are unethical for you as a christian even for the morals of just being a human being those who love money will never have enough how meaningless to think that wealth brings true happiness in proverbs 28 verse 22 it also said he that hasted to be rich had an evil eye which is a greedy person tries to make us to be rich wants to be rich so quick and that is the problem that i have most times with the church sorry to say this because sometimes trying to tell people that once they give money in church that they will become rich that god will make them rich you make god look like a money doubler i'm not saying god does not bless but the bible says that god loves the cheerful giver and a cheerful giver is someone that understands giving a cheerful giver is not someone that is being plundered to give. A cheerful giver is not someone that is being manipulated to give. And as such, that is why a lot of people give by being manipulated and cajoled and they don't receive blessings from God. Because if you really teach people how to love God, they would be able to give freely. When you make it look like giving is a get rich quick scheme, you are making people to become more greedy because anybody that hastens to get rich i'm looking for the shortest possible way to be rich that becomes greed and that scripture continued that such a person does not know that poverty is coming at them because as much as you are greedy and you want to get rich so quick you are inviting poverty verse 20 of that same proverbs 28 says a faithful man shall abound with blessings but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent.